Hello, everybody. Welcome into the Couch GM's podcast. I am your host, George Kurth, along with the two other French hens. We got Tyler Snyder. How's it going? And Cody Roadcap. What is up, everyone? Welcome into another edition of the Couch GM's podcast. Like George said, we're the three French hens getting ready for Christmas, holiday seasons, whatever holiday you celebrate. We celebrate them all here at the Couch GM's podcast. And you know what else we do? We love talking football. We talk every day, and we're going to continue it here and hope you guys uh, enjoy the conversation. Absolutely, guys. I'm sure you're all preparing for the biggest holiday of the year. Uh, Of course, that is the Super Bowl. Um, But before that, we have to talk about the weekly breakdowns and predictions for this week. We're going to give you some fantasy advice on this podcast. If you have any fantasy advice that you need, feel free to reach out to us, ask any questions you have. We're also going to give you some bold predictions that we will most likely get wrong, and we're just going to have some fun talking football. And we want you guys to get involved on our social media channels. We are on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at the Couch GMs. And if you do follow us on social media, you saw last week that I pulled off the picks victory and passed Cody in the overall standings for the year. I had a thirteen and three week. Tyler went eleven and five. Cody went nine and seven. Yeah, I guess uh, I, I kind of laid an egg. I mean, I don't think hens really lay an egg, but I guess I did this past week. It wasn't great. Um, the punishment is coming here on the East Coast. We're getting some snow right now, and they're they're making me have a summer day out in the snow. So I'll be uh be a little chilly. Uh, but the punishment is coming soon to our social media. But you know, we had some bold predictions, and Tyler, you got one right this week, buddy. Are we just gonna blow past the fact that you just said hens don't lay eggs? <laughs> hens definitely lay eggs. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> but yes, I did get a bold prediction right this week. I guess that Derrick Henry would have over 200 yards rushing, and uh, he finished at 195 yards in the fourth quarter. It looked like he was done for the day. They were going to rest him, and I think somebody looked at the stat sheet and said, you got to go back in there. They gave him one more run. He broke off for 20 yards, finished at 215, and then he finally took his helmet off and stayed on the sideline for the rest of the game. So I'm happy to get that bold prediction right. Hopefully he gets 200 yards a game for the rest of the season. I'll take it. I knew it was coming when I saw last year they were trying to get him the rushing title by just feeding him carries in the fourth quarter when it was completely unnecessary. So when I saw he was at 195 and you're like, he's benched. No, I knew he was coming back in to get that. Yeah, you, you got to put him back in there. At 195, it's just like, come on, you got to break 200. Um, but, you know, he only needs to average about 156 yards per game uh, for the rest of the season, these final three games, to be the eighth player in NFL history to break 2,000 yards. Um, I know December is Derrick Henry's season, but do you guys think he can average 156 a game and break that 2,000? I think it'll be close. He has some favorable matchups. Um, Derrick Henry's not a hen. So, but I don't know, man, I was going to do another lay an egg joke and I'm totally have it backwards. I don't know what's going on on today anyways, but yes, I think Derrick Henry uh, is going to get real close. You know, maybe that week 17 matchup, they'll feed him some carries to get him over the hump. Unfortunately though, Tyler, I don't think you want to hear this, but I think even if he gets 2000 yards, his name doesn't come up in the MVP voting, even though I know as a Titans fan, you'd love to see that. Not only as a Titans fan, but as an NFL fan, I'm I'm tired of seeing the MVP be a quarterback only uh, award. I believe MVP is most valuable player. It's not most valuable quarterback. And if you have a guy like Derrick Henry that threw the team on his back and completely dominated all year, he can be considered a most valuable player. Um, just like I believe a guy like Devontae Adams deserves to be in the conversation uh, with how much he's doing this season. It's yes, Aaron Rodgers is having a great year. He is definitely in the MVP conversation, but at the same time, pretty much all of his stats are going to Devontae Adams. So I think he deserves to be in the discussion. Um, It's just, I'm tired of it being a quarterback only thing and a media driven thing. Well, I think his goal shouldn't be 2000. It should be the 2105. That is Eric Dickerson's all time single season record. That one's going to be even tougher to get to, but I think if anyone can do it, it is Derrick Henry. But why don't we move on into some weekly headlines and we should talk about the playoff picture shaping up some interesting ones, especially in the AFC and the NFC, looking at that one single buy you're talking about this year as both 
um, number one seeds have switched. The Packers now have the number one seed in the NFC and the Steelers in the AFC. Yeah, and I think those are how it's going to finish uh, rest of season just based on based on schedule and, of course, I'm biased because I am a Packers fan. Um, I don't think anyone's going to catch the Chiefs. I don't think they're going to drop three games to get the Buffalo Bills back in there. Um, they might drop one or two. But I just want to talk about I am not a fan of this new playoff format with only one team getting a bye. What do you guys think? Like, I, it just – it feels like that is too much – you're awarded too much for – that bye week now i feel like if they were going to go in this direction i would rather they just go to eight teams make the playoffs and there is no buys uh at that at the same time then there's going to be too many scrub teams that are making the playoffs when they don't deserve to um so i don't know i've never actually liked the buy um but at the same time just having one buy is definitely not a good thing to have I'm kind of torn and I feel like the buy makes it interesting as I mean, most people wouldn't care if you're the one or the two seed, if there's no buy to play for. Um, And you got to think the two seed losing to the seven is most likely not going to happen anyway, because you talk about the 16 normally being a weak team. The 17th seed is going to be even more of a weak team. Granted, every year there are teams that, you know, miss the playoffs. They're like, they definitely deserve to be in it. Um, so having that extra playoff team does allow for a team like that to squeak in. Um, but at the same time, you're giving one team, just one team in the conference, a huge advantage over everybody else. And it just seems too one-sided. Um, but I guess that's what you get if you're the number one team in your whole conference. Yeah, it, it's tough because, you know, that one seed comes down to one game. You know, sometimes it's not even going to be a matchup that, you know, those two teams faced off. But uh, George, back to your original question about the one seeds. Um, the Packers, I know I mentioned them. I think they're going to get the bye because their schedule, they, they have Carolina uh, this week, then they got Tennessee the following week, and uh, Chicago to wrap up the season. So not a super tough schedule. The only true competition I would say on that matchup is the Week 16 against the Titans. But the Saints, if they lose to the AFC one seed this week against the the Chiefs, the Packers can afford a loss to the Titans because it's out of conference. So I like the Packers' chances, and I like the uh, the Chiefs' chances to win this week and uh, stay in that bye. So, you know, we talked about the number one seeds. The team that was the number one seed in the AFC was the Pittsburgh Steelers because they were 11-0, and and now we've seen them lose back-to-back games, and honestly, they just don't look good. Uh, how far do you guys think? the Steelers are going to fall obviously with the Browns losing to the Ravens that hurts the Browns chances of winning the division. Um, But do you guys think the Steelers are going to keep losing these games? It's not the time of year you want to fall apart. Well, we know my answer. So go ahead, Cody. Yeah, I, I think the Steelers might have, you know, another loss or two. They could, I don't think they'll actually fall all the way to like 11 and five or I think they can fall to 11 and five because there's three games left. They have two. I, I don't think they're actually going to lose to Cincinnati. So I think worst case scenario, they go 12 and four. Um, but those last two games with Indianapolis and Cleveland, that could be a tough, tough hill to climb. They could find themselves, you know, out of the div- I think they'll win the division, but they could find themselves, you know, the four seed, maybe should have some teams go up there and jump them. Not looking good for Pittsburgh right now, especially with the uh, James Conner getting hurt again. Definitely. And I mean, I see them losing two of their last three and that would probably knock them down to the three seed. Buffalo would pass them. They might be in a tiebreaker with Tennessee or Indy. I'm not sure how that would fall. I'm not really sure the numbers on that, but they're not going to lose the division. I don't think Cleveland can come up and steal that. I was hoping that the Browns would beat the Ravens just so that they would have a better chance to steal the division from the Steelers. But sadly, that did not happen, although that was one of the best games of the year. I have to say it was super exciting. But guys, I think that's enough talking about the playoffs. The only way we're going to see the playoffs shape up is, you know, by playing the games. So let's go ahead and jump right into our Week 15 predictions. And as always, once we make our picks, we're going to post the picks on social media so you can tell us what you thought. Uh, Did you like who we picked? Who would you have picked differently? Who do you think is going to win out of us? But last week, Cody lost. And Cody's girlfriend decided to have a little fun and poke some fun at Cody and we got a pretty interesting wager on our hands. So, Cody, why don't you go ahead and tell us uh, what's going on with that? Yeah, so out of the kindness of my girlfriend's heart, she commented on our post. She said, 
I love you, but you suck. So I called her out and I said, hey, if you want to take on this challenge, you think you can beat us, make your picks and we'll post them too. And if you lose, you have to do the punishment. She agreed. Uh, so we'll go through our breakdowns and then we'll post our picks and then she'll comment her picks on that post. Um, so you can follow along with the matchup and hopefully, hopefully boys, we're safe this week and she's the one uh, doing something, eating something gross, you know, drinking out of something weird. Who knows what the punishment will be. Uh, but hopefully it's not one of us going through it. I would love to see that. <laughs> Sorry, Jim. <laughs> I would love to see it. <laughs> All right. Well, let's move into Thursday night football then. We'll start making our picks. We got the LA Chargers at the Las Vegas Raiders. The Chargers are favored in this game despite their worst record. Guys, who do you got in this matchup? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick the Las Vegas Raiders. Not because I believe they're that much better of a team than the Chargers. I do think the Chargers are a very good team. Um, They've had their issues with blowing games in the fourth quarter. But the reason I'm actually going to pick the Raiders here is because of the fact that they are still fighting for a wild card spot. It might not be uh, the best chances in the world, but at the same time, they are right there. They do have a chance to take it. And I feel like with that extra pressure on their side, it's going to cause them to play harder and that's going to give them the edge over the Chargers that they need. I think it's going to be a close game, but I'm going to say the Raiders take this one. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you, Snyder, and take the Raiders as well. I just think the Chargers find a way to lose better than anyone, even though they did beat the Falcons last week, which you could argue is the other team that finds more ways to lose. I think that doesn't bode well for them on a Thursday short week. I think Las Vegas is a little angry, maybe not as angry as Josh Jacobs owner fans after tweeting or posting on Instagram that he wasn't going to play, even though he was going to play, especially first round of the playoffs. I know that got a lot of people heated, Um, but I think comes out, has a big game. He looked pretty good um, in his limited work before they started getting beat last week. Uh, So I like Josh Jacobs in this matchup and I like the Raiders overall. I will say in a league of mine, there was a team owner that had Josh Jacobs and it was a very close matchup. He was definitely relying on Jacobs to have a good game for him to win. And as soon as that post happened, he was forced to have to cut one of his uh, good running backs on his bench that he's planning on using in the playoffs to get a different running back out of emergency. And then when that happened, he couldn't get that running back back. So I'm sure there was plenty more stories like that around the NFL and around fantasy. Uh, What a troll by Josh Jacobs. Are you guys team that was funny you got us or are you that's just unnecessary and as fantasy owners we hate it? Oh, I'm totally team that was funny. Even as a Josh Jacobs owner, like, you know, you see it all the time how players are like, stop tweeting me your fantasy questions. I don't care about your fantasy lineups. And they don't. They just they care about winning, getting their money, and Super Bowls. Like they don't care about the couch GMs, either us three or all you couch GMs out there. Unfortunately, the players don't care about our fantasy lineups as much as we wish they would. And so I think it was a funny, it was a great I mean, I was the same way. I was like picking up Devin Singletary, I was picking up Peyton Barber, and I'm like, uh, who am I gonna do I really have to play one of these guys? Uh luckily, uh Schefter was came out before the game was like no he's actually warming up and was going to play so i'm team that was funny you got us uh you know makes the fantasy season even more interesting 100 percent team funny absolutely i'm with you there cody i think it was a nice way to get a little payback and we always had been we've been saying a few times this year even you don't you shouldn't tweet at the uh, nfl teams or at the players why you hurt you got to get in there and play or whatever so i think that's just josh jacobs trying to clap back at that but anyway back to the matchup I'm going to differ from you guys whenever you guys give me a chance to pick a favorite, uh, no matter how weird the favorite is being the Chargers. I don't know why the Chargers are favorite anyway. um, Alone, I'll take it. So I'm going to take the Chargers. I love their offense, even though that not the point. I mean, I like their offense. They got to stop losing games eventually. They I think maybe they broke the hex when they beat the other team that loses more than they do. In worse ways than they do, I guess I should say. So I'm just going to, I'm on the bandwagon still. Let's see if they can beat the Raiders. The Raiders are, might have seven wins and might be in a playoff chase, but I don't think they deserve a playoff spot with the way they've been playing up and down. They have to lose eventually. You know, that's the, that's the way to pick games. You know, George, 
Georgia eleven. You have they have to lose eventually. Well, you know, we also get some Saturday night football this week. You know, football every day in twenty twenty. I'm it's coming. I love it. It's coming. Um, and the first matchup on Saturday is the Buffalo Bills at the Denver Broncos. Buffalo looked dominant on Sunday night against the Steelers last week. Hey, Drew Locke did win FedEx Air Player of the Week. Uh, you know, he finally came alive a little bit last week. Uh, that doesn't mean anything to me. I think Buffalo wins this one, wins it pretty easily. How about you guys? Yeah, I'm also going to stick with Buffalo. Um, but guys, with Saturday night football, doesn't that mean that the only day of the week that we have not had football this season, NFL football, is Friday? That that would be right, yeah. Wow, we've had I football so. six days of the week. This is awesome. Um, But yeah, I'm going to go with Buffalo. I think they're the all-around better team. I don't even think it's close. Uh, Buffalo is one of my playoff favorites. I think they are one of the few teams that has a chance to beat the Chiefs and go on to the Super Bowl. However, I still favor the Chiefs in that matchup. Um, so nothing differs for this game. I'm going to go with Buffalo. I'm also going to stick with Buffalo. Not enough people are talking about Buffalo still. I think they maybe they're uh, starting to pick up some hype after beating the Steelers, who stink anyway. But definitely Buffalo. Sorry, Drew Locke. I love you, but not beating this team. All righty. Well, you know, that leaves one more Saturday night matchup. It's a doubleheader, and it features the greatest team in the NFL. The, the Carolina Green Bay Panthers? Packers. No, George. <laughs> Don't even say dumb stuff like that. Dude, the Chiefs play on Sunday. What are you talking about? Yeah, what the heck, man? <laughs> See, if you would have said the Chiefs play on Sunday, you know, you might have been funny. The Carolina Panthers, no offense to all our Panther fans out there. Fun organization. Just haven't been around long enough. <laughs> but uh, And they also don't have McCaffrey because he's most likely going to miss again. All those fantasy owners that got hyped to get him back for the playoffs, well, that didn't happen. Uh, but I think Green Bay keeps rolling. You know, I look for... You know, Devontae Adams, Aaron Rodgers to have another big game. Is that, I mean, that's just automatic at this point, it feels like. I will say, though, if you think back to last year, Carolina did come to Lambeau uh, in a game that started to snow, and it took them down to a defensive goal line stop where they stopped McCaffrey on fourth down to win the game. So, might be closer than people think, uh, but Green Bay's offense is a lot better this year. So, Green Bay should win this one pretty easily, but they, they never like to beat bad teams easily. So you would not take that minus eight and a half there? Would I not take minus eight and a half? Yeah. You're saying they don't like to be bad teams easily. So you think it's going to be a close one, but they're going to win? Uh, no, I think they're going to win eight and a half. That's a tough line. Um, see, they'll either keep them close like they did with Jacksonville all the, the whole game. And you're like, this is Jacksonville. How are you not beating them? Or it'll be like week one against the Vikings where we went up big and then in the fourth corner, we gave up 21 points. And next thing you know, it's they can't pull Aaron Rodgers because it's a two score game now. So, eight and a half, that's a good line from Vegas. I'm not a betting person. I'd probably lean the over just a little bit. I'm thinking like 10 points, uh, but the under is probably not a bad bet. All right. Well, I'm going to stick with Green Bay as well. That line is tough. I didn't want to answer that question. So, I had to throw it on you, um, especially without McCaffrey. I can't touch the Panthers. Uh, Green Bay is just really good. I mean, we can talk a little bit later about how, where you would go in fantasy about not having McCaffrey. I'm sorry to every owner out there that took him first overall. He seemed like he needed to be a slam dunk pick there, and it's really come back to haunt you. Yeah, speaking of Christian McCaffrey in fantasy, Cody pulled off a very big trade right at the trade deadline to get Christian McCaffrey in our main league. And guys, I know that we are usually chippy at George. That's just who we are. Uh, best friends can get like that. But if Cody seems a little more chippy towards George than usual, it's because in our biggest league this week, Cody and George face off against each other in the semifinals. They played two times during the regular season and Cody won both of those games. Yet George still finishes the number one seed. So big game here this week. Uh, it's definitely a rivalry week, so I'm excited to see how that matchup will finish. Hopefully, I will see whoever wins in the championship game. But guys, let's go ahead and move on to Sunday football, um, normal football. We have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at Atlanta Falcons, and I I can't pick Atlanta this time, guys. They let me down last week. I'm going to go with Tampa Bay. 
I got to go with Tampa Bay here as well. I am shocked to see you didn't pick Atlanta just because you seem to pick them pretty much every week. I don't know if you've learned your lesson or you're finally starting to come off the bandwagon after they lost to the Chargers. But I remember last week on the podcast, we were talking about stashing people like Leonard Fournette and Ronald Jones hit the COVID list. Not only is that big for any Leonard Fournette owners in fantasy, but is that a hurt to Tampa Bay? Does that open the door to Atlanta? I don't think Leonard Fournette's as good as Ronald Jones, to be honest with you. Cody, what do you think? I was going to say it's it's tough because, you know, this past week against Minnesota, Fournette was a healthy scratch. Um, so, I mean, I'd imagine he'd be the starter if uh, Rojo doesn't get back from the COVID list. Um, it hasn't been confirmed or announced if he actually has COVID or if it was close contact. He just hit the li- list on Wednesday. So there is still a chance he could make it back for Sunday. Um, but I just don't think Atlanta, you know, I've said all along, like Atlanta is like the team that's like they should be good, but they're just not because of their offensive talent, but, you know, then Julio Jones still isn't practicing. Ronald Jones or not, I think Tampa Bay gets gets the victory. I honestly wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit of uh, Keyshawn Vaughn in the game. Uh, he is a rookie, and I would expect them to want to see what they can get out of him now that Ronald Jones is out. Um, if Leonard Fournette is the starter, I honestly wouldn't be surprised to see a 50-50 split between the two. So Tyler is not loving Leonard Fournette. Um, even with Ronald Jones out. But we're all picking Tampa Bay regardless, so why don't we move on then to the San Francisco 49ers at the Dallas Cowboys. And another potentially big um, return, we don't know if he's going to yet, he was designated to return from injured reserve, which gives them three weeks to do so. That's George Kittle might be back. And wouldn't that be a boost for late in the fantasy playoffs here? Tyler, don't you have him? Wouldn't it be a boost? Oh, I do have him. I have him in two leagues. I drafted him in one early on because tight ends are so hard to come by. I finally wanted a good one. And in uh, another league, I traded George David Montgomery for George Kittle among some other pieces. But that trade backfired on me. But at the same time, yes, it would be a huge boost because the tight ends that you're filling in, unless you have a Travis Kelsey or maybe a Darren Waller, or Mark Andrews, depending on the week. The tight ends you're usually filling in are so wishy-washy. You're lucky to get five points. So a guy like George Kittle, who can give you those big games, huge, huge boost for fantasy, and a big boost for San Francisco, too. They're getting fairly healthy. Yeah, I still don't think you know Kittle will actually play this week. I could be wrong. Um, and, you know, we saw Mostert get hurt again. He's getting a second opinion on his ankle. Debo has the hamstring injury. San Francisco just can't catch a break. And at some point you have to like weigh, I know they're still technically in the playoff race, but like, come on, they're too injured to do anything. You have to weigh like going forward. Uh, and, and maybe that's why I'm just going to be the one to, you know, pick Dallas in this matchup. I don't love either teams, you know, but Dallas is at home and they still allow some fans. So I'll give them a little bit of home field advantage. That defense is awful. I'm sure Kyle Shanahan will run all over it, but, I think Dallas will somehow squeak out the victory. I think San Francisco still has enough pieces to put it together, even if Kittle doesn't come back. I mean, you still got Jordan Reed there who, despite his injury status all the time, if he's in, he's a threat. You still have a million running backs there because there's always a revolving door. They're always getting work. They're always progressing. They always seem to produce. And Brandon Ayuk, if that's how we say his name, we still never figured out how to say his name. Um, went off last week after Debo got hurt, and he is just a major threat on the outside and in the gadget game and everything else. So I think they still got enough going for him. I have to pick him over Dallas. I actually really like Brandon Ayuk. I really like what I'm seeing out of him. I think that he could really be a star for the next few years to come, to be honest with you guys. Totally agree. You want to hear it? It's not a funny story. It kind of hurts. Uh, but Brandon Ayuk, uh, Brandon Ayuk was the original – trade-up candidate for the Green Bay Packers uh, back in the draft. They wanted to add Ayuk there with Devontae Adams and the rest of the receiving core. Uh, they had two guys left on their board with first-round grades. They traded up to go get Ayuk. Uh, San Fran got a whiff of them going up, and there's a lot of connections with Kyle Shanahan and Matt LaFleur, Matt LaFleur's brothers on the 49ers staff. They jumped us with Minnesota because Minnesota wouldn't obviously trade with us, took Ayuk, so we had to go with our last guy remaining 
with the first round pick as uh, Jordan Love, which could be a fantastic pick in four years when he does start playing quarterback. But guys, it hurts me every Sunday when I plays well, knowing we were so close. So what I'm hearing is the Packers really wanted Jefferson or Ayuk, and they were just itching to get one of them. And as soon as both of them were taken, that's why they panicked and took a quarterback. Well, they, they didn't panic and take quarterback. That was just the last guy with a first-round grade um, on their board. So it is what it is at this point. You know, the Packers are still the number one seed, so I don't know how much of a difference Ayuk would have made because Devontae Adams eats so many targets anyways. Uh, but I just wanted to share that fun little – little nugget with you guys about are you possibly being green and gold i honestly believe that aaron Rodgers hasn't played up to his standard these last few years and i think drafting jordan love might have been the best move they've ever made because i think it motivated Rodgers to be like look you can have this rookie but he ain't gonna play i think it motivated him to play out of his mind and that is why we have him in the mvp conversation um, but now we are getting off topic, guys. We are getting away from that game. So let's go ahead and move on to the next game uh, with the best team in the NFL, uh, the Tennessee Titans the taking Lions. on the Detroit Lions. George, you're not funny. You're still not funny. You never will be funny. So we have the Tennessee Titans, and I'm going to pick the Titans to win in this matchup. Uh, who do you guys have? Uh, this one's pretty easy. You know, Matt Stafford hurt his ribs at the end of the Packers game last week. They're still holding out hope he can play, but it looks like it's going to be Chase Daniels, their center. All right, guys, ready? He fractured his throat. Uh, Please, someone DM us, medical professionals out there. Tell us how that happens because I'm very curious. I didn't even know there were – I didn't even know I had a throat bone to fracture, uh, but (laughs) apparently do, and he he did it. And so now their center might be out. So uh, the people that touch the ball the most in Detroit probably aren't going to play. Derrick Henry in December at home. You know, there's a lot of big spreads this week, but 10.5 seems low. You know, Cody's learning a lot this week. He's learning that there's a bone in your throat and that hens lay eggs. This is a big week for Cody. I'm really happy for you. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, sometimes, you know, you think hens are roosters, and then you think that hens are the male roosters, and then they're not actually chickens, and then it's, it's a whole thing going through my head. And I'm embarrassed to admit this on air that I even made that comment. Uh, but I have been informed now. I know that hens lay eggs, and I know that you can fracture your throat. <laughs> it's twenty. It is never, it's never too old to learn, guys. <laughs> George, how old do you think I am? I'm still, an, I'm still a young, spry young man. I'm still able to learn things. You might be young, but think... you are not spry. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Well, guys, I'm picking Tennessee. <laughs> For all the reasons you already said, we're trying to get back on topic here. <laughs> this has not been a good two games for us. Um, <laughs> I don't know if there's much else for me to say. Uh, no Stafford? Sure. Yeah, Tennessee. Fine. So, yes, guys, I mentioned that Derrick Henry needs to average 156 yards per game to break 2,000 yards. And uh, Corey Davis and A.J. Brown need to average 55 yards per game these final three weeks to both break 1,000 yards receiving. Um, It'll be the first time in franchise history that we have two 1,000-yard receivers on the same team. And Tannehill needs to average 260 yards per game to break 4,000 yards. Uh, It's a little tougher, but it is possible. Um, If they are able to do that, it'll be the first time in NFL history that a team has a 4,000-yard passer, 2,000-yard rusher, and two 1,000-yard receivers. It has been absolute offensive dominance from the Titans this year. If only they had a defense and offensive coordinator, Arthur Smith, it's been fun having you, but you are going to be gone next year as a head coach for somebody. All right. So before we move on, I have a really quick question then. So we've already criticized Seattle for having issues with their defense and why that's going to be the death limb in the playoffs. Potentially is Tennessee the same way. Sorry to ask a question, Tyler, but I had to No, see, The thing with Tennessee is um, they lost their defensive coordinator last year. And our defensive coordinator, we had pretty much fairly the same defense last season as we do this year. A lot of turnover. Uh, We lost Logan Ryan in the slot, which hurts. But um, we drafted uh, Christian Fulton, and we also traded for um, Desmond King. Both of them can play the slot. So our defense is about the same as last year, but we don't have a defensive coordinator. And at the same time, we've been playing all year with practice, practice squad players as our number two corner um, because of decimated injuries. And it's caused teams to just 
throw all over us. That and Jonathan Joseph was just garbage. Um, sorry, Jonathan Joseph, I know you're listening, um, but you have played like garbage this year. So now that Desmond King is there, we have Malcolm Butler playing the best he may have looked in his entire career. Um, Christian Fulton is coming back this week. Adoree Jackson might finally play soon, knock on wood. Uh, He has missed 14 consecutive weeks with a quote-unquote minor knee injury. I don't understand the issue. Um, But I'm hoping that with all of those pieces back in the secondary that finally they might get back to their old ways. And if they can play defense like they did last year with the offense they have this year, they could be a really scary playoff team that people aren't talking about. Yeah, I think, you know, Seattle, Tennessee, and I'll throw Green Bay in there. You know, they're teams that have uh, mediocre defenses at this point in the season but even if you look back to last season in the Kansas City Chiefs they had the offensive dominance all year but their defense wasn't very good through the regular season they just tightened up something flipped a switch and they tightened up in the playoff run oh yeah and I think well that was not intentional uh so maybe it'll be the Titans this year uh but if one of those three teams uh get their stuff together in the playoffs similar to Kansas City did last year I think they'll be able to go on a run. So I won't say it's the death of them yet, but it needs some work. Well, why don't we stay in the AFC South then? And the team that is fighting with the Titans for the top of the division, the Indianapolis Colts are hosting the Houston Texans this week. And the Texans appear to be a mess. So do you guys think they have a shot? Of of course, anytime there is a division game, I think that there is a shot. Obviously, I think that the Colts are the better team. They should win this game. But like I said, it's a division game. You never know with those. Uh, we saw the crappy Dolphins beat the great Patriots of old uh, in years past because of the fact that it's a divisional matchup. And at the same time, the Texans do still have Deshaun Watson. I know you can't win a game with just the quarterback, but uh, he's a dynamic quarterback that can make things happen. But at the same time, I'm going to have to go with the Colts in this one. Uh, I, I still think the Texans are too decimated with injury, and they just – really aren't that good so i'm gonna have to go with the colts in this one guys yeah i'm going with the colts it's pretty easily uh the texans defense between injuries uh they've fallen apart they're not very good i think jonathan taylor has another big game ty hilton continues his dominance in houston or against houston i should say uh indy pretty easily uh watson it's fun to watch but i don't think he has a chance this week I'm with you both. I'm going with Indy. Watson can't play superhero enough in this one, even though I don't love the uh, Colts offense. Their running backs look like they could be a game changer and what's holding them in. And T.Y. Hilton finally coming back is big. And guys, I just want to mention that in the AFC, it's pretty decided who is going to win each division except for the AFC South. The Titans and the Colts are tied. Titans do have the tiebreaker with divisional record. Um, But the Titans have... The Lions this week, which should be a win. The Green Bay Packers next week. And then the Texans week 17, that should be a win. And the Colts have the Texans this week, which should be a win, followed by the Steelers next week and the Jaguars in week 17. So this entire division could come down to next week, um, Titans versus Packers and Colts versus Steelers. And it is shaping up to be a very exciting divisional race unless there's a big upset. Well... I th- I'm glad you pointed that out because, you know, I happen to to run the ESPN playoff machine uh, while you're doing that quick. And if the Colts win against Pittsburgh and Green Bay wins, you know, obviously the Colts would win that. But you know, that's how the Steelers would fall all the way to the fourth seed. So back to that game a little bit. Uh, but I think both those matchups are should be good uh, the following week and we'll break them down next week. And I also just want to point out that Deshaun Watson is still dealing with a little bit of an injury that he suffered Uh, against Chicago with his elbow. I don't think he'll miss time, but it is something to watch going forward and how much he pushes it for a team uh, this bad. Absolutely, Cody. Um, So let's go ahead and move on to another game. We have the New England Patriots at the Miami Dolphins. It's a matchup I just mentioned um, being a divisional matchup. And this year it is completely flipped from the previous years that we have seen, and the Dolphins are favored. They look like the better team. And with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and stick with them. I'm going to say the Miami Dolphins beat the New England Patriots. The Dolphins beat the Patriots when they sucked. They're actually good this year. True. I think they continue that streak. So Miami should win this one. 
I think Tua versus Cam will be a fun. I mean, they're not actually playing each other, but a fun quarterback battle to monitor throughout that game. Uh, even in a loss, Tua looked pretty good last week. So i uh, excited for those two. But outside of that, Miami's defense is legit, and Xavier Howard is trying to make his defensive player of the year case. And if he keeps, keeps making interceptions like he did against Mahomes, uh, he'll be a tough beat. The only concern I have with Miami would be their offense got beat up last week. And if you guys follow us on you know, on social media, you saw we put out some waivers. And one guy randomly thrown out there that owned 0.1% of leagues was Lynn Bowden. He uh, ended up coming in. He has a very interesting story because he's playing wide receiver because of a whole bunch of people going out. But he actually has running back eligibility on a lot of fantasy uh, um, interfaces. And like he put up some good numbers, looked like he clicked with Tua right away, probably because they played together on the scout team earlier in the year in practice. He could end up being a great running back fill for you guys if a lot of the injuries do not pan out well for the Dolphins this week and you're desperate. But we also saw DeAndre Washington come in for Miami Um, in week 12 against the Jets. He had 13 carries and. Last week against the Chiefs, he had another 13 carries. He did not do much in terms of yards in those games. He had 49 and 35 yards, respectively, with his 13 carries. Um, But at the same time, he was also receiving targets in the passing game. So he might be another guy to monitor if you're going to target the Miami backfield. Yeah, and I just want to – so, you know, we talked about, you know, we don't really trust Leonard for a net. uh, But, like, where is your guys' line for, you know, either playing those two guys – Obviously, there's a lot of great options, not better options, but like we'll say Rojo's out. Is it like, is he above Leonard for, for net? Like, what's the line? Uh, is he above a Peyton Barber uh, with still no um, Antonio Gibson? Like, where is the line for Lynn Bowden and or DeAndre Washington? You know, I think it all depends what kind of a league you're in. If you're in a 10 team league, uh, which is usually the standard you should be able to find better options than either one of them on the free agency market. And if you're ever struggling with who to start out of possible free agents or your bench, feel free to reach out to us. Let us know who you have, and we can help you out with that. Um, But if it came down to uh, those guys, I think I would have to run with Fournette um, over Lynn Bowden or over um, DeAndre Washington. I just don't trust either one of them enough because I'm not sure which one will get the starting carries. And I know Fournette, just from watching him with the Jaguars, that he does have the ability um, to dominate in the run game if leaned on. Uh, I think I'd go with Fournette. But again, if you have any opportunity to find somebody else, please do. Um, Bowden's um, value depends more on the wide receiver status in Miami. And Devontae Parker was a limited participant with his hamstring. And you're kind of looking at Mike Gusecki as well. He was another guy that left the game, even though he's a tight end. It's just guys that take away passing targets. So I think if you see three guys in that passing attack that are out, I might think about leaning Bowden. Otherwise, I think I'm leaning Fournette as well. But you, I would like to have other options as well, just because you are not quite sure of the workload that you're going to get out of Fournette. It's also worth mentioning that Matt Breida was also activated off the COVID list, so he might be back there for Miami too. So you might see a three-headed monster. But again, Bowden's lining up as a wide receiver more than a running back. He's just a running back out of college and in the draft and everything, and that's why he has running back eligibility. I understand that. I understand that. But the Patriots do still have a pretty decent defense. They do ha- still have some decent corners. Um, I, I just feel like if the Dolphins are going to have to pass, they're going to try to lean more on guys like Mike Kosicki or Devontae Parker rather than a Lynn Bowden. Definitely. That's why I'm saying if they're out, I would think about it. But otherwise, no, I would try to stick with a Kosicki or a Parker. You're right. Just take it at that, Tyler. He said you're right. You know, George doesn't come out and say you're right very often. <laughs> So you won. Congratulations. Uh, and hopefully the Dolphins win. So we all get our pike, our, our pike. Oh my gosh. Up. This day is not going well. All right, guys. It's bears. Exactly. I'm going to take it from Cody. <laughs> um, we got this. And took it from me. Go. <laughs> just lost it. You just took it. Fine. All right. I'm taking this from George. Next game. It's the Vikings and the Bears. The line is minus three for Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota is at home. 
I'm going to go with Minnesota in this matchup. I think the Bears will definitely keep it close during the game, but I think that Minnesota is the better team. Um, I honestly believe that they still have a chance to fight for that final wild card spot, at least make it interesting in Week 17. Um, so I'm going to go with Minnesota in this matchup. This can't possibly – I mean, it could possibly be a worse matchup, but as a Packers fan, like, can both these teams tie 0-0? Like, can we just have that happen? You know, maybe they don't play. Uh, but I, I think Minnesota is the slightly the better team. I think Mitch Trubisky had the game of his career potentially last week. I don't think he can follow that up with another good one. Um, and the Vikings' run defense is a lot better than their pass defense. So David Montgomery should have another decent week, uh, but might not be as explosive as he was the last two. So I think Minnesota squeaks out a victory as long as it doesn't come down to a Dan Bailey field goal. Why is Dan Bailey still on the team, first off? I have no idea. I have heard that they're actually looking into other kickers. Um, there's a chance that uh, another kicker Chandler might be starting. Catanzaro? Is that what I heard? Chandler yeah. Catanzaro? Yes. Okay. That is the guy that will potentially be starting for them on Sunday over uh, Dan Bailey. Well, I think it's worth noting he has to go through like the COVID clearing things, and he didn't try out till Tuesday, so I don't even know if he's eligible to officially join the team until maybe it'd be Sunday morning. I don't know how that their all the covid protocols work um exactly because they change all the time but he is a potential you know guy that won't be able to play until the following week but it is kind of ironic that dan bailey went from like the most accurate kicker of all time to the minnesota vikings and then has just like plummeted his career you know cody speaking of uh special teams covid there is actually some covid going around for some special teamers this week uh Denver's kicker Brandon McManus was placed on the COVID reserve list, although he said himself that he believes he will be back in time uh, for Sunday because he is just a close contact. And at the same time, the Bucks today put their punter, their kicker, and their long snapper all on the COVID reserve list. Yeah, I mean, it's just the a, a name of the game, unfortunately, here in 2020. Uh, I don't think we've heard yet if the bucks if any of those guys again were positive or close contact so we don't know their actual status uh for sunday on uh, and not going too much back in that game but you know it would be interesting like how they would manage you know without a special teamer like is some wide receiver also a soccer player that could do kickoffs and then they just don't kick field goals or punt like that'd be an interesting uh storyline to follow if that special teams unit can't get back i kind of want to see a game fall like that just to It'd be very entertaining to watch here in the later days of uh, December. But um, I'm going to be different from you guys. I'm going to go with Chicago. Uh, Mitch Trubisky destroyed last week, and I know that's not him, and he's not going to do it again. Uh, The only way I could see Chicago losing this game, honestly, is if their defense cannot contain Dalvin Cook. And that's one of the best defenses in the NFL. We say it all the time. If they win games with defense, I don't think Dalvin cook's going to have that off of a week, but if they can contain him enough, Chicago should be able to win. So I'm going to go with Chicago. Yeah. I don't know if any defense can actually contain Dalvin cook, maybe slow him down, but it's going to be real hard to contain him. But I agree with you, George. I do think if they can slow down Dalvin cook enough, they could have a, a chance in this matchup. I think this is one of the closer games to be honest with you of the week. Can't get much closer than a 0-0 zero, zero tie. I wish <laughs> it was in a snowstorm in Chicago this time of year, but unfortunately it's in the Dome. Oh, my gosh. All right, so you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and move us on to the next game because we're not having a 0-0 zero, zero tie. Um, next game we have is the Seattle Seahawks at the Washington football team. Um, hopefully Alex Smith can play. The team has looked so much better since Alex Smith has taken over, but – Guys, I'm going to have to stick with Seattle in this matchup. They're five-point favorites. Uh, Even with Smith playing, I still think Seattle's the better team. Like George said earlier, I think if there's anything wrong with them, it's going to be their defense is going to be the death of them, but they should be able to still hold Washington in check enough. Um, I'm going to say Seattle wins this one. I feel like there's got to be a way, a, a chance of them saying calf injury on him, on Alex Smith when he's coming off that major leg injury, and they would probably take it easy with him for a week and sit him and the only thing that was making them so much better is Alex Smith was protecting the ball so much better than the other two quarterbacks that were in there and I think that's why they were having so much more success protect the ball let the defense do their work Seattle's probably good enough to 
put some points up on that defense. And if they don't have Alex Smith, I don't think there's much of a chance Washington hangs in. I just caught myself laughing, though, because you said the team is doing and I lost it. (laughs) Well, what else are you supposed to refer to them as? Like if you have the Minnesota Vikings, you say the Vikings. If you have the Washington football team, do do you say the football team? Do you say the team? Either way, it sounds stupid. (laughs) Yeah, definitely sounds stupid. Uh, And, you know, I might sound stupid by saying this. Um, I actually think this game's going to be really close. Now, I'm still going to pick Seattle to win this game in the end. And I say close, but, you know, they could throw a t- they could go up by seven or maybe they're up by three and score a touchdown to be up by ten for the final score. But I think it's going to be played very close. I'm surprised George didn't bring it up, you know, make an al- he wanted to make an alarm about it. But it is a West Coast team coming to the East Coast. At one o'clock, we saw Seattle uh, struggle early season uh, against Miami in the same situation. I think the football team's defense is just as good, if not better, than the Miami Dolphins, especially that time of the season. And, you know, Russell Wilson will give you some opportunities on turnovers. Um, If they can capitalize, I think they can keep it close. I think they have a lot better chances of pulling off this upset if Smith does play. Uh, But I'm I'm actually excited to see Haskins back out there. I kind of think he got a little bit of a raw deal uh, just with this whole – quarterback transition not really given enough time to show what he can actually do and I will say from a fantasy perspective if Haskins is out there I think I mean McLaurin you're playing him every week anyways his he's playing Seattle's he's gonna he should have a decent game but I think Haskins is more of a down the field thrower and I think if he's out there gives McLaurin an even better opportunity to score points for you on your fantasy team this week you know the crazy thing is Seattle has actually fallen off lately. Um, And we've been complaining all year that we were so tired of the media saying Russell Wilson has not received an MVP vote. And we just thought with it being such a media driven award that Russell Wilson was almost a shoe in for the MVP this year, especially the way he started the season. But the way that Seattle and Russell Wilson have fallen off a bit lately, we're not really talking about him in the MVP conversation. So after all that media hype, Uh, with guys like Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes playing out of their mind and even a guy like Derrick Henry being thrown in there, fingers crossed. See, (laughs) Russell Wilson might not receive an MVP vote again. I hope he gets one just so I don't have to hear it for eight weeks next season. (laughs) You're you're kind of right there. So why don't we go from somebody who has never received an MVP vote to somebody who won the MVP last year, running out of the locker room and making a miracle play last week. (laughs) No. Yep. All Gardner right. Minshew. He did come in late, but it was way out of hand by the time he came in. He will be the starter again for the Jacksonville Jaguars facing the Baltimore Ravens. And Lamar Jackson is who I was talking about. If you guys didn't get that at home. Okay. Wow. I mean, if you haven't seen any memes of him in the locker room doing some business, I don't know what you're missing. Uh, George, you know what they're missing? They're missing all the poop jokes. Yes, that's it. Yes. <laughs> You know, there was a lot of social media uh, going crazy when he he had cramps and had to go get an IV. And then people were like, well, he's in the bathroom. He's going number two. He's trying to take the Browns to the Super Bowl. We heard them all. Um, <laughs> but he came back and, and he balled out. Uh, Tyler mentioned it when we talked about the Browns, how good last week's game was. You know, Lamar Jackson, that was probably the best he's looked all season. I don't see how Jacksonville slows them down at all. It's a 13 point spread. It could be it it could easily be, you know, 21 points or more. It's a it's a big one. It's a big one, not the number 2 that Lamar was doing, but this game could be a big scoring game and uh there's also the the Yannick and Gakwe revenge game. Is that and, a less game of revenge game than uh the Andy Dalton revenge game? <laughs> I, I think it's a bigger revenge game. And guys, I'm going to go on my own little tangent right right now. Let's hear about it. Yannick and Gakwe. If you, everyone listening can go out and Pro Bowl vote Yannick and Gakwe, even if you don't think he deserves it, just do it. And here's why. At the beginning of the season, Yannick and Gakwe was on the Jaguars and they traded him to the Minnesota Vikings. When he traded them, he was traded for a conditional first or a conditional pick. That pick becomes a third-round pick if he makes the Pro Bowl 
and the Vikings still have to pay it. So any way we can get back at the Vikings or jab the Vikings, it's a good day. So go vote Yannick Ngakwe for the Pro Bowl. It is amazing how they would let the fans know what that conditional pick is. And it's also amazing that he's been on three teams this season because he's now on the Ravens. And he's not, I mean, he might not be making the biggest impact and he might not be worthy of a Pro Bowl, but I think that's plenty of reason for you guys to go out there and vote for him all with everything he's gone through this year. Absolutely. But I mean, other than that, there's not really much to talk about in this game. Like you said, I don't think there's any way the Jaguars can slow down Lamar Jackson, I guess, unless you give him a lot of Taco Bell before the game, keep him in the locker room. But other than that, there's not a lot of ways to slow down that quarterback. Uh, So let's go ahead and bring out my bold prediction for the week. Uh, Talking about Lamar Jackson, try to make this game a little more interesting. Uh, We saw him finally go back to the ways of old. Uh, Last season, we saw the Ravens were so dominant because you couldn't contain Lamar. He was always scrambling. Uh, He's so dynamic with his legs. There's no way to slow him down. And because of that, you always had to keep extra spies in the box to try to keep him in the pocket, which opened up the pass game. It's what made the Ravens offense so dynamic. So he finally, these past couple of weeks, has started scrambling the way he did last season, and it has opened up the Ravens offense. They finally look good again. And with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and say that he will rush for a touchdown this week. But not only that, six or more different quarterbacks are going to have rushing touchdowns this week. That's right. My bold prediction is six or more quarterbacks will have a rushing touchdown. I like it. Good. So so why don't we just go to the four o'clock games, you know, and we'll start with the matchup of the Philadelphia Eagles and the Cardinals, which now could be two and three of your your bold prediction. Uh, you know, the Eagles shocked the world last week, upsetting the Saints. Thank you, Philadelphia, all Green Bay Packer fans. But they shocked the world. They beat the Saints. Jalen Hurts was the spark they needed, um, at least running the ball. He did great. He, he wasn't awful passing, but his legs were definitely noticed. And they are – Six and a half point underdogs going out to Arizona this week. The Eagles are, and I don't think the magic continues. I think Kyler Murray and the Cardinals, they're fighting for a playoff spot. I think they get it done, but I like it. You know, Tyler made it points. Let's see rushing touchdowns from both quarterbacks in this one. Absolutely. I can see both of these quarterbacks rushing for a touchdown. Um, They're both dynamic with their legs, but you know, the last game I said that the reason Baltimore's offense was so good is because they had to stack the box with extra quarterback spies to try to slow down the quarterback. Now, the Saints, I don't know what they were doing because Jalen Hurts in the first half was just killing them with his legs. Wasn't killing them with his arm. He had some decent passes, but for the most part, it was average at best. Um, But his legs is why he was doing so well. He was scrambling out of the pocket, getting so many yards. And then in the second half, I thought, sure. I even texted George during the game. I said, "Mm, don't count on it too much. Saints see what the Eagles are doing. They're going to keep a spy on Jalen Hurts. They're going to try to stop the quarterback run. They're going to slow him down. And they didn't. They didn't have anybody there. There was just wide open holes for him to run through. They never adjusted. They never tried to slow down Jalen Hurts. And I think it's why the Saints ended up losing. Uh, I think this week... The Cardinals are going to watch some tape. They're going to see that that's really the Eagles' main weapon right there, Miles Sanders and Jalen Hurts with his legs. I think they'll finally keep a spy on Jalen, and for that reason, I'm going to go with the Cardinals to win this game. I was absolutely shocked as well that you saw the Eagles running all over the Saints. And while I see, yeah, you're going to have a lot of more tape now on Jalen Hurts and what the Eagles are trying to do, you're talking about going against one of the best run defenses in the league, and now you're going against a mid-tier run defense. I think there's a chance that you might not see a 100-yard game out of Jalen Hurts again. That, that was pretty ridiculous how him and Miles Sanders both got 100-yard games. But his legs could open up a couple of easy passes for him, could open up some rushing lanes for Miles Sanders on some options. And... Arizona has been struggling. They won last week, sure. And other than that, in their last six games, they only won the Hail Murray. So I'm going to go with the Eagles fans who tried to, or actually got mad at me for not picking the Eagles last week when I really didn't have a reason to. I'm going to pick the Eagles this week. Okay, let's do it. He's finally picking his team. I like to see it. Yeah, and even though I didn't pick the Eagles I am going to put my bold prediction on the Eagles player. And George hinted at last week, you know, Miles Sanders 
finally had a pretty good game. And I think that continues this week. I don't think it'll be enough for the victory, but I do think, as my bold prediction, he'll have 150 total yards and two touchdowns. I think he'll be most of the offense. I don't think much of the offense will do much more than that. But I think Sanders tries to put this team on his back, comes up a little bit short. But if you have him in fantasy, it's a big day. I would love to see it. I mean, there's a lot of Miles Sanders owners that would definitely love to see it as well. Um, Cody, I like your bold prediction. But, you know, speaking about a running back having a big day, let's go ahead and talk about the New York Jets at the Los Angeles Rams because last week we finally, finally saw that breakout game from Cam Akers. Guys, this game itself is not worth talking about. It's a 17-and-a-half point line for the Rams. Uh, We're all picking the Rams to win. Let's just move on from that. But what I want to talk about is Cam Akers. Is he trustable in fantasy now that he had a big game, or was it just one big game and proceed cautiously? I definitely think he is trustable now, especially in the matchup. You're not going to see him get 100% of the touches. That's just not how the Rams operate. But a guy getting majority of the touches shows his explosiveness and is facing one of the, well, I should say, the worst team in the league where you're going to most likely get up and run the ball a lot. I like that for a fantasy line this week, and I like Cam Akers going forward, too. Yeah, I think you can definitely trust uh, Cam Akers. I would definitely weigh your other options um, because, like George said, they're definitely going to run the ball with other running backs, whether it's Daryl Henderson or Malcolm Brown. And, you know, if Daryl Henderson comes out early and, you know, runs a couple, even their, you know, three, seven to 10 yard runs, you know, and it looks like he has the hot hand, McVay will stick with them. So there's always that in the back of your mind. But, you know, each running back could get 20 touches this game because of how much of a blowout it would be. So this week, I think you're playing Cam Akers, uh, unless somehow you have like all the good running backs that didn't get hurt. Cody, with that being said, I know that you are one person that has to debate this as well. Uh, would you go Cam Akers or Josh Jacobs? Uh, that That's a tough one, and it's it makes it even worse that the the game is on Thursday night for Josh Jacobs. Uh, unfortunately, I was debating that because I also had Christian McCaffrey, who is most likely not going to play. So I'll be playing both of them uh, in our main league. But see, I, I, think, I think Josh Jacobs is the safer play but I think he's only going to get you like you have to evaluate your team. And I think Jacob's going to go out there and get between 10 and 14 points where acres, he could go out there and only get, you know, six to eight points if he's full committee and be touchdown dependent. Or if we, he's out there like last week, he'll get 24 points. So maybe evaluate your team, see, compare it to your other, your opponent's matchups, and, you know, fantasy is all about playing the right matchups and the Jets is a good one. Uh, but if you just need to score points and you can't take any afford to take any bust, I'd play Jacobs. But if if you're the underdog, we'll say I'd throw out Akers. I think it's a little bit more clear cut because we've been dealing with all these Jacobs injuries. And I understand he looked better last week, but coming off of a short week, a guy that's already banged up, he could be fine. But I like acres better because even even though you're talking about potential splitting i think the rams seem fairly committed to him all right guys well i appreciate the advice um i know i said that that's something cody has to debate but it's actually something i have to debate i didn't want to say that because uh you wouldn't want to help me otherwise so let's go ahead and move on to our next I'd help you than George. in some leagues i do play you in a league this week so you might not want to help me in that one that is true so Extra, next I do play you. we have is the Kansas City Chiefs at the New Orleans Saints. If Drew Brees was playing, this might be one of our more exciting games, uh, a potential Super Bowl matchup. But instead, we might still have Taysom Hill. Uh, God save me. Uh, I- I'm tired of seeing Taysom Hill. I want to see Drew Brees back in this game. It would be a much better game. Uh, either way, I still got to go with Kansas City to win this game. I don't think there's a team I can pick to beat Kansas City unless they play the Raiders a third time. Um, I, I have to go with Kansas City in this matchup. They're the better team. Um, do you guys have any different opinions on that? 
No, it. you mentioned it. It's all dependent on Drew Brees coming back. And I think even if he comes back, he'll come back a little bit rusty. Uh, he might, you know, turn it around in the second half. Might take him a quarter. Might take him the whole game. We we don't know how long it would take him to get back into to game shape and game action. And I just don't think you can afford to give up a quarter when you're playing the Chiefs. I think the Chiefs will win this game. Uh, and again, take that with a grain of salt because I'm really hoping the Chiefs win this game to help the Packers' chances at a, uh, the first round by. So this could cost the Saints the first round by essentially too. So, you know, they got a lot to play for. Uh, but Patrick Mahomes, he's going to try to make a statement of this, uh, you know, essentially primetime game of one of three four o'clock games of why he should be the MVP. And I think it'll be a good one. I think you've seen the Saints come out very strong without Drew Brees in the last few years. Their only game they've lost was last week against the Eagles. And I would probably still pick the Saints in majority of cases. But like we've said, Kansas City is just too good. Patrick Mahomes is playing for an MVP. They're playing for that first round bye just in case the Steelers happen to string together wins for the rest of the season. So it's not like the Chiefs don't have anything to play for. You have to pick Kansas City. I'm actually kind of shocked with Drew Brees. Drew Brees' return being up in the air that the line is only minus three Kansas City. I figured it would have been a little bit wider if you're expecting Taysom Hill in there. You know, so I have a question for you guys. Um, Now, if Kansas City comes out and plays like Kansas City and puts up big points early, and let's say Drew Brees is out, um, let's say Kansas City has a... Uh, 14 point or more lead at halftime. Uh, we'll even go more than that. We'll go, we'll go about a 20 point lead at halftime. Do you think if the saints really want to get back in the game, do they turn away from Taysom Hill in the second half? You know, they need to throw the ball. Do they turn it to Jameis Winston or do you just ride it out with Taysom Hill the whole game? I don't think you can turn it over to Jameis Winston at this point. I think Sean Payton is, you know, held Taysom Hill is, you know, he's the starter He's our quarterback. We paid him all this money in the offseason. He's the guy that's going to replace Drew Brees when he hangs it up, most likely at the end of this season. I don't think you can send that message to him. Well, you can't really throw, so we're going to go with Jameis now. I think it's ride or die with Taysom Hill down in New Orleans. I mean, they went down big against the Eagles last week, too, and they still stuck with Taysom Hill. I think that would have been the situation where, oh, we're finally seeing this team struggle. You would have seen Jameis Winston come in. I, I don't see it happening now. All right, guys. Um, so we can just go ahead and move on to our Sunday night game. We have the Cleveland Browns coming off that heartbreaking loss against the Ravens, and they will be taking on the New York Giants. Cleveland is four-and-a-half-point favorites. Uh, Daniel Jones looks like he could be hurt again. We might have Colt McCoy as the quarterback for the Giants. So I'm going to go ahead and pick Cleveland. I think it's a pretty obvious pick. I think that people are still underselling Cleveland a lot this year. I think they're a dominant team. Um, They could make a good run in the playoffs. Uh, Give me Cleveland. Yeah, I'm with you, especially with no Daniel Jones, which, you know, some people might say, well, he, Colt McCoy won't throw as many picks or fumble as much. So it might be an upgrade uh, from a turnover perspective. Uh, I'm interested to see how Cleveland responds to that heartbreaking loss. You know, they look like the dominant team for most of the second half, and then the last five-ish minutes, they gave up the the game, essentially, uh, there to Baltimore. So I'm interested to see how they respond. I think, though, they might come out a little bit slow. This is a team against the Giants. I think they can afford if they come out a little bit slow. The Giants won't run them out of the building, and they could come back. You know, Chubb and Hunt are playing lights out uh, this whole season together, Expect except when Chubb was injured, obviously. Uh, so give me Cleveland. Unfortunately, Giants fans, at one point when you beat the Seahawks, you looked like you were the favorites to win the NFC East, and now your future doesn't look as bright. I'm going to agree and go with Cleveland, but I do think the Giants actually do face a bit of an upgrade with Daniel Jones being out. Similar to how Washington got better once Alex Smith came in and they started turning the ball over less. I mean, we saw the Giants beat the Seahawks without Daniel Jones. And even though he didn't have that big of a game then, I'm going to go ahead and say we're going to see Colt McCoy go for 250 and two touchdowns in this game. But I still have Cleveland to win because that running back duo and that offense, I still think can outscore that. I guess we'll have to wait and see, George. I don't I don't see that one. I mean, I know you were even throwing out like 302 to start. 
I see you calmed it down a little bit to 250. Uh, I don't blame you. Uh, I don't think he'll, he'll probably hit 250 yards, but two touchdowns, uh, I'm not feeling it. Uh, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. So let's just stay in the AFC South with our Monday night game. Guys, is this the last Monday night game of the season, or is there one more? I can't remember. AFC there should be North more. for all the fans out there, not AFC South. Uh, oh, my. I am having the worst day. <laughs> it's not your, not your podcast. <laughs> It's it's been a rough one, you know. I I I fall to last place and I fall apart. You know that's just what happens here. You know you can't win them all. You know I'm rooting for you to bounce back. I really am. There's too many fans out there cheering for George, so now I got to cheer against George. I got to feel like the evil, the bad guy. Um, I'm hoping George loses every week from here on out. He's got too you many would fans. Cheer against me anyway, even without fans. Don't say, don't give that excuse. You're not wrong, but it makes it even worse. Every week, people are like, yeah, George won. Woo! George didn't get last. Let's go. Look, I just want to make all those people upset and have George lose. Uh, that's what I want. I want to be the bad guy. Great way to gain viewers to try to make our viewers upset. So let's talk about this game now. And Pittsburgh <laughs> is favored by 12 and a half. And I do not see Cincinnati having a chance, even with Joe Burrow, unfortunately. Pittsburgh's going to lose two more games, and this is not one of them. Yeah, give me Pittsburgh over to Cincinnati. I wish Joe Burrow was still playing so that Pittsburgh could lose again, but he is not. We'll have to wait till next year. Uh, give me Pitt. Yeah, I'm, I'm with I'm with you boys. I don't even think Cincinnati will score twelve and a half points. Well, obviously they're not going to score half a point, but <laughs> I don't even think they're going to get to the, the line. Uh, Cincinnati is looking rough, uh, and I don't think it gets any better this week. Pittsburgh, you know that. Cincinnati's so bad, Pittsburgh might have a run game this week. Even with James Conner banged up again, it could be back to Benny Snell and Anthony McFarlane. But Pittsburgh all day. If you got the Pittsburgh D in fantasy, that's another great start. Obviously, you can't pick them off waivers because how good they've been. But if you got them, I mean, it's going to be a big week. This, I almost feel like I'm talking about the Jets and I'm talking about the Bengals. I, I'm so sorry, Cincinnati. It's. It, I mean, it's a weird circumstance. The Jets can't say they uh, lost the number one overall pick quarterback to uh, an injury. The Jets just stunk before that. Yeah, but the Jets might have the number one overall quarterback next year, so let's hope he doesn't get lost to an injury because I really like Trevor Lawrence if the Jets are smart enough to take him. Um, but, guys, that wraps up our picks. Um, as always, we're going to post these on social media, so – Reach out to us. Let us know who you would pick, who you like, who you don't like. Who do you think is going to win this week? No, it's not George, so just stop it. Stop it now. Um, but We're going to go ahead and move on to our lightning round, uh, which in the playoffs, this is very, very important. We have our starts and sits of the week. Um, we'll go through our starts first, go to our sits. So, Cody, go ahead and start off the lightning round. Alrighty, so my start of this week, uh, if you saw us on social media, we posted some waiver wire ads. We mentioned the Cleveland Browns, and I, they're going to be my start of the week. They're going up against the New York Giants without possibly Daniel Jones. You know, defenses are those teams that you stream all season. They're going to win you these matchups. The Cleveland Browns should win you your matchup this week. I just like all the opportunities they're going to get. Heck, maybe they'll even have a punt return. My start of the week is going to be Eagles quarterback Jalen Hurts. Look, if he's able to put up over 20 points against one of the best defenses in the league, he should be able to do the same against a lesser defense in the Cardinals. So if you need a quarterback this week, go ahead and ride with Jalen Hurts. I'm going to go ahead and start Mike Davis. I know it seems like it should be a no-brainer, but there was a lot of people with the whole Christian McCaffrey thing going down that I heard benched Mike Davis last week, and he did his thing. So good matchup again this week. Make sure you play Mike Davis. He can end up being a championship winner if Christian McCaffrey doesn't come back. George, you just had to get a jab in against the backers. I can't stand it. But anyways, we're going to go into our sits now. And my sit of the week might be a little bit of a surprise, but it's Jared Goff. Now, he plays the Jets. Do you think that'd be a plus matchup? Except he plays the Jets. He might not even play the fourth quarter. They're going to run the ball a lot. We saw it last week against the Patriots. Once they were up, they ran the ball pretty much every down, it felt like. So I think that continues again this week. Jared Goff has a low production week, uh, so find a different quarterback. Okay, my sit of the week might be a little bit of a surprising one based off of where he was drafted this year, but I'm going with Clyde Edwards-Alaire as the sit of the week. He has been on a complete downswing lately, and I really just don't trust him, especially against a defense as good as the New Orleans Saints. I know Miles Sanders had a big week last week, but I don't see CEH having it this week. If you can bench CEH, 
do so. Speaking of how the mighty have fallen, I'm going to go with another early pick running back, and that's Ezekiel Elliott. He has a tough matchup against the 49ers, and we all know he hasn't been the same since Dak has been gone, so I have no reason to trust him in a playoff game. If you have a better option, I would avoid Zeke this week as well. Alrighty, guys, that wraps up Weeks 15 sit and start. Uh, hopefully it helps you guys uh, win some fantasy matchups or win your consolation bracket because nobody likes to finish last. Uh, as always, thanks for listening. Be sure to check us out on social media. And don't forget, this week, my girlfriend Jennifer Hoover challenged us in the picks. And as it could be a potential fan punishment, if you want to get involved with something like that, call us out, leave a comment. Uh, and if you like the podcast, leave a like and review. Absolutely, guys. And you know what? If you love this podcast, don't be selfish. Don't keep it to yourself. Tell your friends. Try to spread the love. Spread the word. Uh, try to get as many friends as you can to start listening to the podcast, following us on social media. Help us grow. Uh, the more we grow, the better our podcast is going to become and the better it's going to be for you guys. And, of course, just get involved. It's more fun for us and more fun for you if you get involved. So uh, just have some fun with it. Let's go. Let's all be Couch GMs together. And thank you one more time for listening to the Couch GM's podcast. For Tyler Snyder and Cody Roadcap, I'm George Kurth, and we will talk to you all next week. A boom!